Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, December 14th and it's 6.30 p.m. <clears throat> got a somewhat lighter agenda tonight. We got our minutes. We've got a, a, an exciting sewer rate discussion. We have a topic about unpaid sewer charges to the tax bill. FY 2020, excuse me, fiscal year 2022 capital assessment. And we've got our COVID state of emergency update and then any other town or administrator uh, or select board updates. So uh, with that, let's, uh, let's get rolling. How about the, the minutes for December 7th, 2020? Motion. I will second that. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the minutes from December 7th? Aye. 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 All right. <clears throat> so our next topic, Jeff, is the FY21 sewer rate. Yes. So... Are you seeing anything different on your screen? It, it's pulling up. There you go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so I just um, looked at what was done previously, yep. and that was uh, basically what was approved at annual town meeting for the budget. Um, the the debt, I think that's still the sewer realigning debt. Mm -hmm. um, take the total, divide by the number of sewer units. We had uh, one added and one taken off, so the same number yeah nice um and so it, it's looking like an increase of uh four dollars and 79 cents nice. this year okay mr chair if i could uh yeah. jeff did you reach into the contract to see what the escalator was for year on year for the operator yes and i'm trying to recall exactly what the escalator was i know it's it's kind of strange because it's a calendar year escalator not a fiscal year escalator yeah, so you do like mean. half this year and half that year right um but i can i i don't remember i can i can get that information for you following following up on that would it be helpful uh as we go through these I think it's a 10 year contract and we're in the, in the first five, as I recall, uh, would it be helpful to reopen the contract and ask to have it pivoted to match the fiscal year? So we don't end up having to go through these machinations. Good idea, Scott. Yeah. It couldn't hurt. Right. I mean, if it's, if it's a language, I think we have a, we have a working relationship with the sewer operator. And if it's a, a language issue and you're changing it to, July instead of January. Um, maybe it's worth exploring. Yeah, absolutely. Can't hurt to ask, right? Yep. Yep. I'll I'll look at the exact language and get the pull the escalator and then um, start a conversation. Great. Would... Thank you. <clears throat> so an increase of four dollars and seventy nine cents. Um, we know we have a debt principal that's on the relining. Uh, is there any um, that is coming? Is, let me ask this question. Timing of this going off of the rate and then any uh, new debt coming on. We're in the process right now of one of the lift stations being reworked. Yeah. <clears throat> so that would be helpful to get from Rich if there's anything coming up for 21. I mean, for them, calendar 21 for us. Fiscal 22. Yep. Um, and there's current debt going off and what coming on. Okay. Thank you. And that's just for borrowing purposes, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Borrowing purposes. So under the category of unpaid sewer fees, do we go after the 31 properties of unpaid sewer fees? Or is this just happened to be the snapshot in time uh, as of now because of the, because of the um, tax bills? 
because of the tax bills. Yep. Okay. Just do, do we want to add them onto the tax bills uh, so that when they go out, they're part of it? Got it. Very good. I have okay. no questions, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, take a motion. A move to set the sewer rate of three hundred and twelve dollars and fourteen cents per unit, uh, a rise of four dollars and seventy nine cents, and um, recognizing that we have a little bit of homework to do on uh, realigning the timing of the escalator. Yep. I I think weren't we talking about uh, some other section that had to be checked out? Yeah, in the capital. future. Right, capital plan. Part of that is the uh, North Main as well, uh, Mr. Chair. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. Do we have a second? The whole thing that he said. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what I, went, I went a little, a little far afield there. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So there's our new set of sewer rates. <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see, let me put my agenda again. Uh, da, da, da. We have our FY 2022 capital assessment. Do we, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, do we want, I didn't hear in that motion that we were adding the unpaid to the taxes. taxes. Is that something you want to vote on too? So, the unpaids are for the current year, correct? For, uh, I believe they are fiscal year 20. 20. So why 20. wouldn't we why wouldn't we go after that money versus putting it on the rate for this year? Because if you don't collect it, then you're gonna be short. Yeah, got so it. Would, yeah, got it. Got it. My, my apologies. Yep. So that that total there, um, I would move to include in the recently approved sewer rate, the unpaid for 20, FY20. Okay. And we have a second for that? Second. All right, all those in favor of moving the unpaid into the rate? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Good catch. Sure. All right. On to our FY22 capital assessment. Do we have some exciting graphics there? <laughs> Not exciting <laughs> at all. No. Uh, uh, you know, some of some, us like some very <laughs> basic math. Uh, no. <laughs> the assessment for capital stabilization last year was $115,970. Um, two and a half percent on top of that is uh, 2,899 for a grand total of up to $118,869. Yeah, and it's important to, to, I know she said up to, and that's important to note just because you don't always necessarily need it, but it's an important distinction. Do we have a second? Uh, second for discussion. All right. Um, just if I could, Mr. Chair, the, yes. the discussion point is to remind uh, people who are watching uh, or who may watch this in the future that it was a town meeting vote to approve the creation of this fund. It was a town meeting vote in year one to establish and raise the base value. Every year thereafter, the way the law reads, the Board of Selectmen can increase up to the two and a half percent, hold or decrease. Can't go over two and a half percent, but it's a Board of Selectmen vote after that first year that town meeting actually does the approval. Yep. Just in case someone with a long memory goes, wait a minute, I thought we did that. Well, after year one, you don't do that. Yep. Thank you. I, I, no, I, thanks for the reminder because it's, it's a slightly different procedure and, that, and it's good to have people remember that. <clears throat> and I think since we've had this in too, I think it's helped us stabilize our management of that and be a little more productive, I think, with the capital stabilization and everything. 
it also removes some pressure on the operating um, budget that would sometimes use windfalls or anyway, it, it helps, it helps it does. put in a silo capital. Yep. Do some more programmatic planning for it, which is great. And the capital board's been doing a great job. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry, my voice is like <clears throat> cutting out a little tonight. All right. So um, no more discussion. Okay. All right. Uh, Get a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. <clears throat> now on to our COVID update. And I don't know, I didn't see earlier. I can't, I'll have to scroll down and see. I don't know. No, the EMT, uh, EMT, sorry, is not uh, available this evening, but she did give me an update okay. uh, to share, um, which is that Sunderland has 10 new positive cases since Tuesday the 8th. Yep. Um, and so according okay. to her numbers in the next reporting period, which will be Thursday, um, she expects the total number of cases over the two weeks to be 18, which is three more than the previous two week period. Okay. So, is that, are we yellow? Is that put us? Well, or? I, I don't know. I have okay. to look into that more. Um, okay. we, we were green this week and, and I apologize my, my, I expected to send that out earlier today, and it didn't get out until the end of the day. But uh, we were green last week, um, yep. and I, I think we'll, we'll probably be on the cusp of green and yellow uh, when it comes out again Thursday. What is that? Spring green, if I remember my Crayola colors? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I mean, I guess in light of the huge increase, that's not too bad, all things considered. When you look at the, the percentage increases around us, so it, it's probably in line with where we've been all along in terms of the rise and fall. But that, unfortunately, we hit a, a rather sad note today where we hit 300,000 deaths from COVID now. So as of earlier today, so keep wearing those masks, folks. So, David? Yeah. Can, can I, uh, as for a COVID update, could I ask uh, the Frontier School Committee rep to give a give an update? Yeah, please. The Sunderland, uh, the Sunderland. Uh, Peter, what they're doing in the schools, trying yeah, to keep everybody be... in town abreast of what's going on? That'd be great. If you don't mind, Peter. Um, yeah, I don't have a prepared speech, but there's been, uh, we've changed this is not only in Sullivan Elementary School, but in all four towns in the district, uh, we have changed back to the remote system um, through the Christmas period. And so that's uh, effective uh, up until when school resumes at the beginning of the year. And prior to that, there's a board, joint board of health and uh, Superintendent Modesto uh, meeting on the 29th to evaluate the situation at that point. Right. Um, the only thing in Sunderland, um, there is, will still be a very small number of students going to the school who are students uh, with very special needs that really um, have not been able to uh, do the learning uh, effectively at all on a remote basis. And so, you know, just a handful of cases, we'll still be having some students at the school for the remaining time until uh, the Christmas break. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow night to go over this, but that basically is is set for, uh, again, the rest of December. Uh, there's not that much left in the school uh, calendar before we break for the Christmas holiday. Uh, there's concern that, uh, you know, we may be rising in, in, in uh, you know, sort of the same way that, that places around us are, but we're still rising and we're rising. You know, if you look back a, a month or two, the numbers are a lot higher than they were a month or two. And so, um, you know, in cases they have exceeded the, the metrics that we set up for, for continuing with the hybrid uh, uh, model and, and that was 
good bit of the reason why it was uh, uh, decided to, to go back remote. Um, part of the work to be done in the next couple of weeks prior to that December 29th meeting is to re-examine the metrics uh, to see if you know any changes should be made and so on, because I think that's part of what the process ought to be um, to keep sort of asking, you know, okay, are we, are we setting up the right standards to make decisions by? Um, so that will be going on. Um, beyond that, uh, I guess the only thing I would say is that the, uh, that Darius sent us something the end of the last week that I shared with you guys, um, yep. it, it sent out to, um, I think that one was sent to school committee members and it was essentially looking at what the, uh, department of, uh, elementary and secondary education is coming up with for the standards for you know the education that we should be providing to our students and that was in things like how many hours per week under the different models are you supposed to be providing for the students and uh and there have been a number of districts around the state that have been pushing to have that number lower because they were unable to uh you know attain that that amount of learning uh when we looked at what we were doing here in our district uh, we were something like, you know, 20, 30% more hours of learning than what the state seemed to be about to set out as a requirement. And so, you know, on the one hand, it was a bit of dismay because the standards seemed to be lower than one would hope they would be statewide, but at least take a, you know, take a good bit of, uh, I don't know what satisfaction or pride or something that, that our district at least seems to uh, be way ahead of the curve on a whole lot of this stuff. Um, the only other thing I'd like to point out was that Frontier had a meeting on Tuesday night of last week. And I watched that because, you know, you learn things sometimes by watching what other school committees are doing. And um, they went through their, uh, part of it was going through their finances. And one was something that you may have seen in the Greenfield paper this morning was about the track um, and how that, uh, you know, the numbers for that are higher than what they'd originally planned. But uh, again, I'm no expert on this because I, I haven't been following it all along and Scott probably knows better, but um, there was, uh, the feeling was that whatever number they'd given to the towns in terms of the expected, you know, capital spending that was gonna be the money that was borrowed and so on, that they really had to stick with that because that's what they told with the towns and therefore they were looking at coming up with the additional, it was gonna be a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, to get the dollars for the plan the way it is turned out when everything was really fully looked at. Um, and one uh, place for getting that uh, was through their um, E and D account. And, you know, somebody sort of, you know, I think Darius preemptively said, well, people may ask, how come we got, you know, a lot of money in the E and D account, you know, pretty much up pretty close to the 5% limit. He says, you don't understand when, when COVID arrived last spring, we just chopped down, you know, chopped out whatever spending we could possibly chop out. Yep. And then uh, what happened was, you know, so we did that, but then this CARES stuff came along and the CARES money, she said, and then she Shelley piped up and said, I just want to thank um, all the towns for their uh, support in getting for their support in getting us, you know, able to use the CARES money. She says it's been, in, it's been incredibly important for both Frontier and for all the elementary schools. And I know it's been true for Sunderland School mm -hmm. to be able to do all the, you know, whether it's mechanical stuff to get the ventilation in the, in the buildings to all the PPE, to all the uh, technology, both hardware and software, all this sort of stuff. Um, and she just wanted to, you know, thank you guys and your, your, uh, uh, you know, the administrations in the other three towns for the real cooperation in making this possible. Um, so that was pretty, that was, that was nice to hear. And then the other thing was that the uh, budget actually, I think was signed by the governor last Friday. And um, the numbers that were in the cherry sheet as far as, you know, for the, that came out of the legislature, which were still favorable compared to what we were planning on seemed to have come through, you know, without being uh, changed. And if you look at the frontier budget, frontier somehow, and I, again, I say I'm no expert on this. Uh, I don't, I don't know the reason why, but the number, 
that they have in now in the 21 budget for regional transportation is up a good chunk of money from what it was in FY20. And that just sort of came in through the legislative process. It wasn't in the governor's proposed budget. And, you know, that's something on, you know, a little more than $100,000. So that will be another thing that, that, again, helps out the frontier picture. Um, at this point, they still have, you know, it'd be a while before they have any idea of what, you know, how the assessments are going to break down between the towns. Um, Shelley did say that, you know, the initial planning, and I think this was the guidance that you guys issued, was to um, try, you know, come up with a level services budget um, right. and see what that, you know, where you end up on the numbers. Right. Um, so that was that. And I guess the only other thing, we have a meeting tomorrow night. Um, and one thing there is to go over our own capital uh, plan for the school and what we might request for the towns. And, and that's something that, that I particularly want to talk to Scott as time goes on, because he's the, he's the uh, select, per, select board person uh, on the capital planning committee. Um, and that is, you know, how we can look a little more comprehensively at the school's need on, you know, coming up over, you know, a package of the next several years in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, how are we going to take care of this stuff? And, and I, you know, I get sort of the feeling sometimes, you know, we're all, you know, despite all we're doing, we're still, you know, that we're still sort of falling behind mm. and how are we going to deal with the bigger items? Um, you know, I mean, there's some ways to do it. I think Frontier has been admirable and, 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 and Scott worked a lot on this in terms of how they've come up to deal with this stuff. And, and I think we need something along those lines at the school. I don't know, you know, I, I haven't in my own mind got an idea of what to do. Just we need to, we need to get, you know, we need to get a better plan for dealing with the, the bigger stuff. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't feel like year on year on year. There are some things that are years in the making. I, last year they put together the rim board and siding work. Right. That's a three-year plan. That, that, yep. that feels like it's still kind of patching, right? It doesn't feel like there's, you know, big work being done, yet there's a lot of small things that are being, uh, right. tasks that are being completed. So I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying, Peter. What's, yeah. a, what's, a, what's a three to five year view look like? Well, I have a better, you know, I mean, I, I don't have, I didn't come prepared to talk about that other than to say that we're going over that tomorrow night. And I've been sort of trying to push Darius and Shelley to let's look at something more than just what we're going to submit, you know, for this one year. Okay. And, and something so that, because, you know, I mean, that's the way you got to do it if you want to get things done. And, and, and we can't be, you know, we're supposed to be taking care of these buildings. And you look, you know, even now where, you know, the, the, the use in town hall has gone way down. The use in the, the library, just in terms of wear and tear because of the number of people going in there, got way down. Obviously, there are fewer people going to school, but they're still getting a ton of use. And right. so um, we got to take care of it. Right. And, um, right. So I think, again, we'll talk about that some uh tomorrow evening at our meeting but i'm trying to push darius and shelley to really you know also come up with mm -hmm. proposals long-term planning longer, yeah. term, longer term proposals and uh, that's gonna be good so 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 out of out of yeah. I, i'm i'm happy that peter talked about it unfortunately i'd rather he ended with what i'm about to say now than budget talk because most time budget talk makes people go to sleep Right, right. Um, Good yeah. point. But the, the most important thing I think that came from Peter's conversation was a conversation about SLT. And SLT is what, what the state calls student learning time. And that's actually with the, now they're in remote and hybrid schooling, the, the state is setting minimum standards um, that. And, and basically it's contact hours with the students and Frontier and Union 38 um, are setting the bar as for, as for SLTs. They're way ahead of what um, is being required. And, and I think that's important for, for our residents and moms and dads and, and, and caretakers and of, of kids that are in our schools to know is that our, our school administration and school committees with the help of our teachers and faculty and staff are making it so that our kids are not only receiving the minimum, but they're exceeding that minimum of contact of school hours. And I, I think that, that we wanna make sure people know about that. Um, 
because I, I, I've heard from um, friends and others about sometimes kids go to classes and they may not see a, a, a teacher for two days. Um, and that's, that doesn't appear to be happening in Union 38 in Frontier right now. And I, and I would just like to want, you know, and it's a good thing that we talk about budgets because budgets are important, but sometimes we don't talk enough about the good things that our schools are doing. Sure. Um, and that are, and that, and again, this goes not only back to the administration, but our faculty and staff, right. the teachers, our para, paraprofessionals, they're, they're doing a great job as well. That's an excellent point. We get a little lost in all the budgetary details and things sometimes. Jeff, did you, um, you do. yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit, just touch on some budget things. Um, <laughs> Back to it. I want to put people to sleep. He's, a, he's um, an administrator. What do you expect? Yeah. <laughs> Peter mentioned that, that the governor signed the fiscal year 21 budget. And I just wanted to mention that this Thursday, they're going to have the consensus revenue hearing at the state for the fiscal year 22 budget. Oof. So that will be very interesting. Never but, ends. Yeah. It rolls right into the next one. Um, and then I also am keeping an eye on, uh, uh, on the CARES spending, not spending, the CARES reporting. And I, I just want to mention it because I, I am, I will say that the direction has not been clear and consistent regarding what uh, is re eligible for reimbursement from FEMA and has changed. And I also don't... That was FEMA turning your lights off. Yeah, that's right. we're not covering the lighting. <laughs> uh, See, Jeff, we told you to be careful. <laughs> confirmation whether or not if it's eligible for CARES, but not for FEMA, that the state will definitely reimburse it 100%. Um, and by the way, all that money runs out in uh, 26 days or 27 mm -hmm. days. So, uh, sorry, six, 16 or 17 days. So um, I, I yes. think that we're in pretty good shape, but it, it needs to be spent and, and received by the end of the year. There's going to be reconciliation periods, but I just, I, I guess I wanted to put it out there that, that there are certain things that originally FEMA said, you know, PPE, cleaning, fine. And then at a certain point, they said, well, only PPE and cleaning for first responders. And sure. so, you know, we're working through all of that, but um, and, and hopefully it won't be any sort of issue and CARES will come in and sweep up what, what FEMA doesn't accept. But I, I just wanted to mention that as well as we wrap up and keep our fingers crossed for additional federal uh, aid related to this. Yeah, yep, thank you. That's a good point. So if I could, while we're on the subject, Peter, you mentioned the regional transportation. I wonder, uh, Jeff and Mr. Chair, if it wouldn't make sense for us to uh, uh, reach out to Representative Blay and Senator Comerford, who have been both advocating, as well as the Berkshire delegation, um, advocating uh, loudly for uh, some measure of equity in, in, that, in that formula. So I don't know if the timing is apropos, but maybe they have some insight. That's right. It's probably a good idea. At least <clears throat> you can find out. You're right. And to the extent, to the extent that you know they, they were they were instrumental, or the Western Mass delegation was instrumental in getting some extra money for the larger regional transportation challenges. You know, we should thank them. Yep, I would agree. It's always been a challenge in that department. <clears throat> so Representative Marks. I mean, all of them. I don't agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> Thanks for the still, update, Peter. Are, are we still are we still doing COVID updates? Uh, we can still do some if you got something. Sure. I, I got a couple. Oh, I got one more in particular. Yeah. So cool. um, this afternoon there was an emergency meeting of the uh, South County Senior Center Board of Oversight. Um, basically, without going into a lot of the details. Um, is, is dealing what happens um, when a um, person, staff, 
somebody that uses a senior center, picks up meals, whatever, comes in contact or if, and, and unfortunately in our area, um, COVID is, is, has reared its ugly head and it's coming back strong. So basically, um, the senior center is, is run with, with, um, through the administration, administration of the town of Deerfield's, uh, um, um, policy for personnel policy and stuff because they, they're the ones that pay. And basically the, the town wanted the staff at the senior center to know that the town of, town of Deerfield uh, wants employees to remain safe and continue to get paid uh, throughout the pandemic. They've encouraged department heads to develop solutions so that employees can work so we can continue to provide community services. Working remotely is different for each department though, and it can be anything from handling a few e handling emails and telephone calls to sending paperwork out for employees for them to process while they're out of the office. Um, Deerfield, Deerfield has had three instances I've learned um, mm -hmm. in the past months where they've actually closed down their, their town hall. Um, so basically they, they want a, a, safe, a, a safe environment for not only their staff, but the people that use it. Um, the Board of Oversight did have a vote today. Um, and in our vote, we, we uh, voted that we will require staff to have a negative COVID-19 test before returning to work to the center. Right now there's free testing sites available uh, in our area, starting tomorrow in Franklin County for December 15th and December 16th through the help of our legislative, our legislators, Senator Comerford, um, Rep. Blay, Paul Marks, and the rest of the, the Western Mass delegation. There will be up at GCC on 1215 and 1216 um, free testing. So if you want, you can go to the GCC site and also at the University of Massachusetts, um, uh, free sites to Hampshire, Hampshire, Hamden, Franklin County residents is now open um, Monday through Thursday um, by appointment. All of these test sites, both at GCC and UMass are asymptomatic test sites. And again, what does that mean? It means that if you were not experiencing any of the symptoms, you can go and you can schedule at UMass or go to GCC for the next two days, a test that, that is free. Um, so UMass, you just, UMass, you, you w, go to uh, UMass, uh, www.umass.edu community COVID test website, and you can make an appointment and you can go and get tested. Um, but the senior center, back to the senior center, um, we are requiring um, our staff in the senior center to have a COVID-19 negative test before they return to work. Um, and there is a, a, a large food distribution that's occurring on Wednesday that will still be occurring. Uh, we are getting volunteers to man that. And I talked to the uh, Deerfield Schleckman about water to six tonight. And they said they're going to be able to, they have volunteers um, to man that. So nothing will change, but we're just trying to make sure we have a very safe senior center because unfortunately COVID is very difficult on our older population. Right. right. That's good practice. All right. <clears throat> um, do you have any other up uh, COVID related updates, Jeff? Nope. nope. All right. Um, now we move on to select board updates. So we've sort of kind of mashed some of those into some of our previous things, but. <clears throat> um, so, so David, just so I can just so I can continue, mm. uh, there is a question about meals tomorrow. 
right now meals are going to be delivered tomorrow as okay. well. Those aren't canceled. That's good. <clears throat> In case somebody was wondering, that's good to know. Yeah, it, it, and again, I, I, you know, we we have to be we have to be pretty flexible um, because we're, we're you know we're dealing with the senior center is in Deerfield and you got the Deerfield Board of Health and and the chain of you know the, the how how you go through the chains of you know who's in charge of what and whatever um, but our basically at our meeting today the Board of Oversight basically said if, if it's in town of Deerfield the uh, and the Board of Health Deerfield Board of Health is you know if there's a health issue they are the controlling authority right, so right they have to do what they they have to do oh. um selectman update if i could mr chair yeah um i just um took a ride a ride around town um last night um i i i was knocked over by the amount of um people that have gone out and put up lights um, for the holiday season. Seems that right now uh, Hepburn Drive is in the uh, <laughs> as a temporary temporary lead in lights. Uh, Eversource has reported that the uh, Hepburn Drive uh, electrical bills have gone up 34%. <laughs> nice. Uh, there seems to be a lot of lights on Hepburn Dr Drive, but I think they're and, and but I think it I, I think it shows I I I think it shows that people you know we're we're faced with a very difficult challenge right now with the uh, the pandemic that's affecting us but I still think it's telling us that deep down there's still a lot of hope in our community there's still hope in our communities um, and there's a looking looking forward to the future. Um, that that hasn't changed, um, and that you can you can knock people down, um, but we have a lot of strength as individuals, and that strength is compounded by the community. And and how do I say that? I say that by Tracy Zachary was in here last week about putting up a skating rink. And um, when when we had a problem when we had a problem over over at the senior center. Um, they went out looking for volunteers and they had volunteers a short time later. Um, and, and we respond to, or and at least in, the, in, in where I'm familiar with, if there's a problem, um, and I think was it Winston, Ch Scott, Scott likes these sayings, but I think it was Winston Churchill says, said um, that the Americans will eventually will do what's right. After and exhausting, I, after exhausting, all other all, options, yeah, exactly right, <laughs> right, and and, and I yeah. and I think there's a there's a lot to be said in that simple statement, uh, yeah. and and I just want to I just want to yeah. um, let um, a, a lot of people know that that the the holiday lighting and stuff like that means a lot to a lot of different people. Yeah, I, th I thought it was very uh, a very nice addition this year, and it kind of reminds me of when uh, they lit up Sugarloaf earlier in the year. Right. And uh, they're back with some nice new LEDs over there. So, um, <clears throat> but, uh, and I, I will say, I noticed um, coming back and forth, you know, the fire station side of the safety complex is pretty festive, but it's kind of gloomy when you look over on the police side. I'm not throwing <laughs> that out there, you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, Dave, the only problem with the, the only problem with the fire side is that they got their re if they're if they were a ship their red and green lights are on the wrong side. Oh, you can't. Uh, have that. You I, I'm just coast. saying. I go by there and I'm saying, oh, yep. if that was a ship coming at me, I'd have trouble. But because <laughs> got his point is, is it coming or is it going? That's right. <laughs> Good thing they're not navigating down the river, right? <laughs> that, yeah, that's correct. Good point. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> All right. Um, do you have any uh, any other updates, Scott? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And then uh, we have a personnel committee meeting tomorrow, Jeff. So we'll be doing that. <clears throat> Continuing uh, some of the stuff we started last year and the year before. So <clears throat> I think, unless we have any public comments, that, uh, that yes. We have a um, public comment from an audience member there. <laughs> just a couple of quick updates uh, to 
so dovetail um, off of the lights. We've had yeah. 27 people participating um, in, in sort of the contest um, nice. so far. And I think we're gonna try and put the addresses on the website so that if people are interested in saying, aside from Hepburn, where else they can go look at lights, yeah. <laughs> um, then they, they will be able to find them without having to drive throughout town. That'd be um, nice. So doing that. Um, I also wanted to talk for a minute about, which is probably as exciting as budgeting, which is scheduling um, and specifically scheduling budget meetings. <laughs> presentations. Yeah, there you go, the double fun. A double whammy. Um, and just how you wanted to go about doing that. Do you wanna try and do it on alternating weeks? Do you wanna, just have yeah. one budget presentation and then try and double up on the and and not schedule anything else. Yeah, that, that would be good. How you guys have done it? Okay. I I would I would I would so. vote I would try to encourage alternating weeks, especially for the big for the big ones. Okay. Thing get kind of long sometimes, especially when we hit the school and things like that. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Um. Okay. So that. Yep. We'll start. Um start doing that i think the 11th might be the first one um okay. so i will work on those um i also wanted to mention that that i heard that that waitley has um postponed their annual town meeting to june so i'm just i i don't know that I think it's anticipation that the budget processing is going to be delayed again this year mm -hmm. and rather yeah, than yeah. waiting till the, uh, so let me rephrase that. I don't think they've postponed to June. I think they've postponed to late May, maybe early June timeframe. So um, putting it out there in case that's something that you want to consider or talk about uh, preemptively. Yeah. So it may be worth that and we can research the bylaw. We know we have date and time by date, excuse me, by bylaw. So what steps would there be? You know, do you call it and postpone it definitely? Do you, I don't know. I'm curious what the, what the mechanism would be. Yeah, and I, I think that the provision that allowed us to delay it with a select board vote for this year's annual town meeting is still effective. Okay. So, so that, um, could still happen. Otherwise, yeah, there are other mechanisms that can yeah. be used. Is that expires? Does it expire at the end of the year? I think so, but I, I okay. I'll look into it and, and see yeah. what the options are. But I at least wanted to to mention it. Um, I am. I also wanted to ask. You know, uh, on the agenda, I said that the next meeting was going to be next week. Um, I'm going to be out of the office next week, but happy to host this meeting and, and have it. But uh, um, I didn't know if you all had vacation plan, not that we can go anywhere, <laughs> but <laughs> I guess it, um, it's the holiday times and I wanted to see if, if there yeah. wanted, you wanted to take a week off either next week or the following week, just for scheduling purposes. That's fine with me. Yeah, I don't have any. I mean, if we don't, if we don't have a lot of stuff, there's, if there's we nothing pressing, do this, we do our signatures. And, right. Right. And okay. Do it, you know, the following week. Okay. Yeah, I think the the um, the only thing, and it's not super pressing, is uh, RDI wanted to come in and give an update. You know, the six month update is mm -hmm. mid December, um, and then talk about how things are going to be moving forward. Um, but I don't think a, a week to, or two delay would be an issue for them. Okay. Okay. Right. So we'll skip next week, is what I'm hearing. Yep. <clears throat> Sounds good. What will I do on a Monday night? <laughs> <laughs> you could go down to Hepburn Drive, Tom. Check out the lights. There you go. I would say, I well, it, Hadley Road wasn't too far behind, though, Dave. You be careful. There you go. Yeah, that's all right. That's, that's all right. You know. Yeah. We're and just getting warmed to... up for next year. Gonna have so. to get a drone video of, of the. There you go. See yeah, how the lights. Drones, that nice guy. Yeah, yeah that's do, right. Do you hear that, F Cat? We got some footage we need coming up. You know, a little stock footage action going on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do you have any? Um, 
Sorry, the, oh, the last okay. thing was just that we we did, uh, or I received a, a request um, for a pollinate, pro pollinator community resolution. And I didn't know exactly how the, the select board uh, approaches those types of things. I know that, you know, the CPA funded to pollinator gardens. I know there's talk about the um, butterfly habitat near the school. And I think that there's a lot that, that the community is doing, um, but, but there was a, a request to sign a non-binding resolution in support of pollinating and, and um, being respectful of pollinator insects. So I didn't know Some, is that sometimes we have to be careful of those. I'd like to read uh, it. See you know, it. that may, that may mean that we can't mow along. Yeah. Uh, there there is language so about insecticides, um, but again it's non-binding. So I was kind of I'll I don't take know. a look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I can certainly pass it along. Um, yeah, pass along. But I wasn't sure. Okay. I mean, pollination is important being a farming community, that's for sure, you know? Yeah, but, but I, and, and you're right, we want to take a look at it, you know, right. but we, I, I'd hate to vote on something that we haven't had an opportunity. Oh, no, and I, 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 it was more about the process of, um, you know, is there, and I haven't seen one, a blanket policy of, you know, we don't really do resolutions and rarely do proclamations and. Um, well, you know, that, 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 that it's a, it's a, Back back when we first started, um, we we always not now everything is sent out by email. But back back when we we back before computers, we used to have a reading folder, and then when you read and, and instead of copying every piece of literature that came in, then they you would you would uh, have a reading folder, and then each person member of the board read read the thing they would initial it then they would have three when it had the three signatures on it then the, the ta would put it on for discussion at a meeting unfortunately we don't have that any longer um that that's the only bad side of not having paper i think yeah. um because then that was a kind of a check to see if you know make sure everybody had read a piece of correspondence um before so then we could talk about it so we had to figure out how to do that because you're right we might don't be able to do it digitally I'll, right I'll we can do that yeah we can do an electronic version and that, that'd sometimes. be good you know yeah. if we could see that and, and see and then then we could put it on then then you can ask the chair if we put it on the then then ask the chair if you put it on the uh the, the agenda yeah the, yeah yeah, yeah that's a good idea i'm sure we can probably rig up something in um sharepoint i think yeah that. Yep. Um, okay. That's all I had. All right. Um, any um, public comments tonight? I don't know if anybody, I don't think we had any, but I always like to check. <clears throat> all right. So with that, um, so our next meeting will be Monday, the 28th of December, unless something comes up. So um, in light of that, everybody have a happy and safe holiday season and uh, try to remember the COVID rules in the meantime. And happy holidays, everybody, as I wave my arms to get the lights going. There you go. All right. Uh, we have a motion? motion? All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor of German? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody.